Welcome to the January 14th, 2014 School Board Business Meeting. If you would please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item one. Are there any adjustments to the agenda tonight? There it is. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Item two. Approval of school board business meetings. May I? I'm sorry. Business meeting minutes. May I have a motion? David. I move that we approve the school board minutes of uh, the executive session, the regular business session, the executive session as set forth in paragraph 2A through C of our agenda uh, as, in, as attached to our agenda. Is there a second, Elizabeth? Any discussion? All those in favor? OK, item three, comments by student representatives. We have Tim Hartel here from the high school. So. Um, uh, the school, the semester, we're all, all the students are very excited to take midterms and, well, <laughs> excited. <laughs> um, the juniors are, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and right now the, the juniors are doing the bottle shed up at the transfer station. Um, in terms of senior college applications, 70% of the seniors have gone early somewhere, which is very exciting. Um, that it, it's so huge. I think it's getting bigger every year. Um, yeah, and of course, our mock trial has been very successful, and we're very happy about that. And um, the speech team has won their fifth tournament in a row in the state, and they're hoping to win states for, I think, the fourth time in a row. Thank you. Any questions for student representatives? I'll just note that Sierra is unable to be here tonight. She is um, pursuing an internship opportunity. Thank she you. She sends her regrets. OK, thank you. Um, item four, comments from the public on items on the school board agenda tonight. Seeing none, I will move on to item five. Um, start, with, and I start with item 5A, um, sorry, recognition of the mock trial team. Uh, will some, someone stepping forward? It looks like Mary Page is here to, to introduce the Thank team, you. their head coach. We're delighted and excited to be here and to um, explain briefly our win, our fourth win in a row. I am Mary Page, the teacher coach for the mock trial team. I've been the teacher coach since 2003. Um, and we have several student members who are going to speak very briefly to you in just a minute. But first and foremost, I also want to recognize and thank our attorney coaches because there could not be a mock trial team unless we had these gifted members of the law community who gave to the team so graciously and so generously. Our head coach, uh, Dick O'Meara, who has also been with the team almost 10 years. Uh, John Sarbeck, who's a CEHS alum, who is an assistant attorney general for the state. And also your own David Hillman. I almost said Shillman because the kids make fun of his email. Um, uh, I don't I think they want to accept me as their own, but. Um, I, I think they do. So anyway, all, all these efforts have led to our fourth state championship. We're excited to be heading to Madison, Wisconsin, where hopefully we're going to um, really place highly this year. So without further ado, let me introduce briefly members of our team who are going to explain very briefly. They're going to introduce themselves, explain what they did, and what we hope to accomplish at nationals. Okay. Hello, my name is Madeline Conley. This was my first year on the mock trial team and I've had a great experience so far. Um, we would not have been able to get where we were today if it weren't for the High School Parents Association, Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation, and the entire community as a whole. It's been great and we feel extremely supported and I hope to keep doing this for the rest of my high school career. <laughs> My name is Woody Chang. Um, this is my first year on the national mock, on the mock trial team. Um, I was Chris Jones. I, I played a role of Chris Jones, a witness in the tr state trial case. 
And for nationals, I hope to go on as an understudy or possibly as one of the actual participants in the competition. Hello, uh, my name is Walker Grimes, and this year in mock trial, I was Officer Kelly Demlong, an expert witness for the prosecution. And um, I'm really looking forward to going to nationals. I'm hoping I'll get a spot as an expert witness on that team, but otherwise, I'm looking forward to help support the rest of the team, and just it's exciting. Hi, my name is Rosie Stevens. This was my second year on the mock trial team. I was Sam Anderson, the sister of the deceased. And I'm really excited to be going to Nationals again, and I hope to go as the double witness. Hi, my name is Rose Bailey, and this was my first year on the mock trial team. And I was the defense attorney for Terry Jackson, who was the main person. And we're fundraising with clink bags. <laughs> so. Bring them over. We'll pass it down. Hey, get some, right, mon get some money on it. Take all of them? I'll take all of them. Yeah. All right, as she does that, I'll introduce myself. My name's Henry Gent. I'm a senior, and that this year was my third year on the team, and this year will be my second year going to nationals. It's always a great time. And I'm up here, first of all, to talk a little bit about fundraising, as you can see we are doing, because this year there are nine participating roles in nationals. Last year we brought about 10 kids. This year we're bringing 18. So. We need, obviously, a lot of fundraising, so we're trying to start that early. And so any clink bags can just be taken straight to uh, uh, Hannaford. And also, I think it's really important to mention that part of this recognition, as Ms. Page had already stated, needs to go to the coaches. And Ms. Page, though, did make the mistake of leaving herself out of her own recognition, as you might expect. But I think we need to remember her and also the attorney coaches in that recognition. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Jonathan Sarbeck. I'm actually one of the attorney coaches, and um, I think we, as uh, Mary said, uh, these kids work so hard, and they make our job, as uh, Dave can explain, just so much easier because they want to be there, they want to put in the work, and they do, and they perform to the highest level. So we're really proud of them, and uh, I went to nationals last year. It's a whole different ball of wax, um, but it's good because we have a lot of people who went that are going to be returning, so they're used to it. Um, but it's going to be great because we're going to get some other people who haven't been there yet there, and they'll get that experience. And uh, I think we're going to, going to be even stronger for the state tournament next year. Thank you, and congratulations, and good luck at nationals. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can I make a couple of comments, John? Yes, please, David. Um, I I'm one of the attorney coaches. Um, I do want to express my pride in not only the kids that are here. To give you an example, um, you know, the gentleman who explained that he was the policeman, uh, he's not even looking at me right now. Mm -hmm. Walker, would you stand up for a second? Stand up. <laughs> he play, now, he's a nice looking boy, but he played a policeman. And I can tell you he was phenomenally convincing as a policeman. He doesn't look like a policeman. That's what these kids do. They play a role. They get into the role. They develop an accent. They get a demeanor. They get a, um, he, he, would, he would use police terms. There's all kinds of things they do. And they get graded as a witness. That's, that counts just as much as a lawyer's role. Uh, you can sit down now. Um, <laughs> what, what, what didn't come across is uh, we compete against a lot of teams in the state. And one of the things we did, were able to do this year and have done uh, for a number of years is we let a lot of kids participate. There is, I think, um, we put on a prosecute, the same case, we do the prosecution side, and then we switch and we defend the same case, and the team switches. So we both prosecute the case, then there's a second trial where we defend the case. Um, we ha I don't know the total number of roles, there's probably six witness roles, maybe five, uh, ten total roles for lawyers. We had almost a and out of all those roles, we probably had a different person for almost every role. No other school does that. They rely on three or four key people to do everything. And this year we made a conscious effort to involve as many kids as possible. And we still won the states. We won every match. We've won every trial, I think, for four years. We've been undefeated for four years. And this year we did it. As you notice, most of these kids are first year, second year, third year. We don't, and with one senior, we have an amazing team of seniors. Uh, but I think that says something for the program, for the,
for the teacher coach, the teacher coach, and the coaches that we made a conscious decision this year to involve as many kids as possible, not necessarily the very best kids. Uh, although they all turned out extremely well, that was our theory. We would develop and let everybody have a particular role, um, and I think that's an important difference between our school and other schools. And I mentioned earlier that we've been not only won at the states for four years, we've been undefeated for four years. And uh, we go to the nationals, and it's against uh, a large number of larger states with uh, a lot of training. We've done very well every year, um, and I'm comfortable we'll do an equally great job this year. But it is an honor to teach these kids. They really do work hard. Um, I never did mock trial in high school. I did a lot of sports, and I can tell you that what they do is as hard as any sport I've ever done. Uh, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work, um, and then they have to get up in front of a courtroom filled with people and judges and people trying to trip them up, and they do a tremendous job, and I'm quite proud of them. That's what I want to say. Thank you, David. Any other okay. comments? Okay. Uh, on to 5B. Great job. Thank you. Thank you all. So we'll move on to item 5B, um, the recognition of our retiring uh, business manager, both the school and the municipal business man manager is Pauline Aportria, who retired last month. She's not even here. Her, her official last day will be February 7th. She's um, working okay. for us very part-time until then. Okay. Um, and uh, we just wanted to um, briefly recognize um, her work on behalf of both the schools and, and the um, town government. Um, Pauline's been a tremendous asset to Cape Elizabeth schools and to the town, reflecting on the many roles she's played and the wide range of personalities with whom she has worked. I was struck by the confidence that each of her colleagues has in her. It's something remarkable. The challenges of her position are easy to spot. Two administrators, two public boards of elected officials, two large and varied organizations, multiple collective bargaining units, and time and time again, when there's uncertainty over an issue, all eyes fall on Pauline for an answer. Her answers are never doubted. I've watched people who couldn't agree with each other about the color of the sky <laughs> settle a dispute with a single word from Pauline. This deep trust is rooted in her hard work and diligence and it's been earned one person at a time by demonstrating that she's done what she needed to do to understand the issues at play and the numbers behind them. To me, there's no greater honor than to have earned the trust and respect of your community through honesty, integrity, and hard work. And I hope that this honor gives her a deep sense of satisfaction for she has earned it. This community owes Pauline a great debt of gratitude. I want to thank her for her service and I wish Pauline and her husband a long and happy retirement. Thank you. Well said. Thank you. If the board is amenable, I would recommend just putting that in writing to Pauline as well. So she can hear you on this. Uh, if the board is amenable, I would recommend just putting that sentiment in writing to Pauline, um, having John sign it on behalf of the board. As she's not here tonight, I think that would be a. I nice think that's a nice choice. Could we allowed to add something if we want? Absolutely. Um, I, I've worked with Pauline. Um, I started with an, uh, a joint task force set up by the town and the school board to look at insurance for the town. And Pauline was the advisor for that. So I've worked with Pauline, I, I, I don't know, seven or eight years now. And uh, I've also, as a lawyer, I've worked with, for 35 years with some of the best financial people in our country, from New York, from Boston, uh, in reorganizing businesses and uh, dealing with very complex budgets, dealing in a highly, highly contentious area, um, even more so than dealing with town politics and town boards. Um, and Pauline could hold her own with anybody I've hired or dealt with in many states, many districts, and many forums. I have worked with her. She's able to explain uh, a f extremely complex budget in a very coherent way. She explains uh, terms and concepts that are unique to municipal governments that 
I still think are nonsensical, but she's made me understand them. Uh, she's the epitome of integrity. Uh, she is always available to answer questions. She's always available to, to do certain things. And the one small story I'll give about it, when I first started on the school board, I was nitpicking all of our monthly progress reports and budget reports. And it got down, to, and I kept drilling on it. It got down to the point where it was just, it was, she was like, she was playing with me. So we finally evolved to a single sentence. You know, Pauline, is there anything in this report that we should be concerned about? And the answer was yes or no. And I have to tell you, in my 35 years, I have never trusted an expert to ask a question like that and rely on the answer. With Pauline, I do. And I can't give anybody a higher compliment than that. That's all I have to say. Thank you, David. Is there any other discussion? OK. Item 5C, proposed budget schedule. Do you want to yeah, so our, our finance chair is not here, um, but there is a draft um, calendar in your packet with proposed dates for um, budget meetings beginning on the 25th of February and continuing through um, a vote anticipated in June. Um, so it would be helpful if board members, I guess, could review the schedule, let us know if there are any conflicts so that we can um, adopt it um, relatively soon. Thank you. Item 5D, the superintendent's report. Okay. So as we've just discussed Pauline's retirement, I guess I'll start with hiring. Um, we are still in the process of trying to fill our vacancy for the business administrator. Um, and as the board is aware, we still have an opening in technology. Um, that position was uh, not prioritized above the hiring of a business administrator, so we haven't undertaken um, that hiring process at this time through discussions with our administrative team and our technology team. Um, things seem to be in okay shape right now, so our discussion um, as of this just yesterday um, with both of those teams was that at this point we want to be looking forward to hiring for the next, the upcoming school year. Um, posting for the upcoming school year with a sort of end sooner if, um, if available um, clause attached to that posting. Um, our hope would be to begin interviewing um, right after February vacation um, and hopefully finding someone to bring on board. There's that. Um, just a reminder, I know we experienced a couple of snow days. Uh, there was some feedback from folks that they weren't aware that we didn't, we were no longer using our K-12 alert system. We sent out a notice about that in November. And I know some of our school administrators have been sending out through our school um, email system just uh, advisories that there's no school on particular days. But if you are looking for that information bright and early, the best way to do it is to check one of the local news stations, either Channel 6, 813, or our local Portland group radio stations, as that information is usually available there um, before 5.30, sometimes as early as 4. Really depends on <laughs> um, how easy it is to make a determination. Um, not that it's ever easy. Um, Meetings for school board are available on YouTube now. I um, was asked to just point that out to people. So if you go to the school board link, um, our school board page is on the website. You can find the links to the videos. It's a little bit easier to watch them that way. Um, so that, that may help people. Our high school gym floor um, sustained some water damage during the Thanksgiving break. And initially it looked like it might um, hold up. Um, at this time, we've determined that it's not likely to hold up. We're still working with our insurance company um, around an assessment of that, but we're anticipating at least a partial, if not a full replacement of that floor. Um, at this point, we're hopeful that that can wait until the end of the school year. Um, that's, that's promising, but we continue to monitor the damage and um, the playability of the floor. Uh, one hour of code week was a couple of weeks ago. You may have seen some press about that. It's technology, STEM work. So I just wanted to highlight some work that occurred in our, occurred in our Spanish classes at the middle school. Um, uh, Susan Dana held um, a lesson for her Spanish students where they all registered under the one hour of code site and worked on the coding tutorials. And she felt that um, 
it was really sort of an exciting, engaging experience for students. And um, as a district, that's work that we're looking at as part of our STEM pieces. It ties in with some of the robotics work that's been expanding. And there's a discussion scheduled sort of among um, teachers and administrators, um, particularly at the middle level, um, sometime in the next couple of weeks. But it's, it's, it's important, I think, for students to have an understanding of how technology works, not just pushing the button and having things come to life, but to really deepen their understanding of, of how it works, because they're going to be great consumers of it as we move forward. Um, so there's that. A long list of things. Try to stay in order. Um, we received our No Child Left Behind reports. I was of the impression that those were included in the board packet and discovered that they weren't. So we will provide those updates to you for our next business meeting and be able to answer any questions you may have about those. We're still obviously at work on professional development. Um, we hosted um, Dr. Mike Shackelford again for two days um, last week, working with our teachers K-12 on differentiated instruction, developing um, differentiated unit plans. And feedback has continued to be positive about that work. He'll be back with us again in March. And we hope at that time to offer um, a night, an evening session for parents, just to provide some information about what that work involves and what that might look like in a classroom. The middle school held its spelling bee today. Uh, I'm not yet at liberty to announce any results of that, but uh, if our student representative makes it after basketball practice, he may be able to divulge that information. Tomorrow morning from 8.30 to 10.30, we are hosting an estate planning session for um, children with disabilities. So that may be some, a topic that's of interest for um, families and um, friends of children with disabilities that will be held from 8.30 to 10.30 here in the Jordan Conference Room, just behind me. Okay. <coughs> a reminder that there's no school on Monday. If you're not monitoring the calendar, that's good to be aware of. Um, Pond Cove has been um, continuing their work with Stan Davis. He was here yesterday and um, worked with staff after school, was in school all day, working with the core team for some of that time, worked with staff after school, and then did a parent presentation last evening. Um, he, the, the, t the theme was supporting your child during tough times. And he'll be back uh, April. Thank you. Um, kneecap scores will be out sometime the end of this month. So we'll have that information along with the NCLB No Child Left Behind reports to share with you. Um, Pond Co staff and our middle and high school staff as well will be reviewing and analyzing NECAP data um, for reading and math, most applicable um, for three through eight. Although um, the high school, it's important sometimes to see how students did before they got there, even though <laughs> they don't necessarily take the NECAP. Second semester at Pond Cove, end of January 10th, as you heard from Tim, the middle school's entering into midterms, and I believe the trimester ends the end of next week or beginning of the following week at the middle school. So it is that transitional time of year. Be looking for report card information to be coming home, those links in your email, so that you can log in and find that information um, through the Parent Portal on Power School. And Pond Cove's music concerts will be early evening. So those are upcoming on the 3rd and 4th of February for 3rd and 4th grades. Thought I was misreading that, but that is correct. Um, the 3rd and 4th on the 3rd and 4th. <laughs> we're, we're, we're all about simplicity in 2014. So I think that is the end of my report. Thank you. David. Um, I had a question, but I'm, I, we have a person in the sound room that could turn up the mics a bit. I'm having a real hard time hearing you. Okay, I can speak more loudly. Well, I, I don't think it's you. I, I don't know if the per, if the person there can hear me and they can actually turn it up. Appreciate they turn up. It may nope. be that the room is nearly empty. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. It's just like <laughs> seat stand. You're supposed to think it's full hello, out there. Hello. Come on. Um, I do have a question. I'm, I'm curious. Did, how did the gym floor get so wet that it's now damaged? We had a pipe burst. And why did, there was a did, malfunction in the system that has since been addressed and resolved. Um, but it came to our attention. It happened during the Thanksgiving break, so we became aware of it. We know it was fine Wednesday night, and we know it was there was significant water on the floor Friday morning. The, um, two questions. Uh, um, I, I understand you're talking about insurance. 
Is there any idea of whether or not the insurance is actually going to cover something like that? And secondly, what would be the shortfall? Right. There... We anticipate that it would be that the cost will be fully covered. I mean, I'm, I can't speak for the insurance company. I want, we want to give them time to make their assessment and review the claim. But I, I would anticipate that it would be fully covered. The one exception would be if it is a total rebid or even a partial rebid. It's a significant project. We're talking a couple hundred thousand dollars potentially um, if it's the complete floor. So the only piece that might not be included would be a request for proposal package. So either our facilities director could create that or we would ask someone to create that. So that's potentially a three to five thousand dollar expense. Okay. I, one last question. I'm curious because most insurance policies, if we have to replace a floor, we get a new floor. Most insurance policies don't give you replacement costs. They give you the market. I'm just trying to see if we have a budgetary issue because that floor will be expensive. Right. It will be expensive, but I'm not anticipating a budgetary issue um, okay. based on my conversations with Mr. Marles, my review of the engineering studies that we, we, we have to bring people in to look at the condition of the floor, to assess for whether or not there are any mold concerns, to look at the wear patterns overall, to look at the lifting in different sections of the floor. Um, and our assessment is that the cost should be covered by the insurance, Thank with the you. exception of that cost uh, proposal request cost. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you. Then on to item 6A, the consideration to approve the project graduation fundraising efforts. May I have a motion? I move we approve the class of 2014 project graduation committee fundraising efforts according to board policy DF-R fundraising. Second. <clears throat> Thank you. Is there any discussion? How exciting. I wish you could tell us what they were doing. <laughs> That's the Our next lips one. are sealed. That's the trip. <laughs> this is, this just, is the fundraising. Is the, 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 to everyone who, who went speech. in the water on January 1st, you're going to have to go back because we didn't raise enough money for the entire event. So back in the water. <laughs> I know. Really. Give us some more clink bags. Um, okay. David. I, I believe there's some description in our packet of what that fundraising effort has raised and what it in the general outlines of it. And I assume that that's what we're approving, not so there is a description of what we're approving this in the Generally, we, we approve fundraising efforts when they exceed a threshold, which used to be $20,000. $20,000. $20,000. $20, um, uh, and when this items come, come before us in the past, it's been because, um, although at this time uh, they don't know exactly how much they'll raise, they anticipate requiring more than $20,000. $26,000. But there's a general outline of, I mean, I know what project graduation is, but there's a general outline so when we vote to approve this, we're approving something, a general outline of what's going to be done and how much it's going to cost and so forth. Correct. It's in the packet, yeah. Correct. I'm making it clear that the motion is yes. approving. Thank you. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> well, this particular motion is just to the fundraising aspect. Yes, the but details. will be towards the activity. Uh, Yes, and uh, details of the fundraising efforts that have been and are anticipated to be undertaken are, were included in the packet. So. Um, all those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, Kate. Okay. Yes. You know, I think it's, all, it's about the last four years that the price has exceeded 20000 and I guess we should look at policy since the price of this um, it, the cost of living has gone up, and um, this is the first night in like the last four years we haven't had somebody come and present this to us. So we might look at as a board increasing the twenty thousand threshold. threshold. Um, yeah, I mean the the, 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 the policy committee could certainly take that up, but the, the intent of the policy, as I understand it, is not to discourage right. this particular kind of fundraising, but that the board um, in its fiduciary duty to, to the community around um, all expenditures on behalf of the district, that the board has a responsibility to understand what fundraising efforts are, are being done on behalf of school sanctioned activities. And so part of this process is about um, just providing information to the board. So it's not that, that, that if you exceed that threshold, you can expect 
um, you know, be, to be, um, you know, to have to go through a rigorous approval process with the board, but um, we do, we do, we do need to have an understanding of um, what funds are being raised and for what purposes. Jeff. Jeff. Please. Um, this is more for new members of the board, if I can, and perhaps members of the audience, because I know over twenty thousand dollars is a large sum of money. Um, and so every year one of the rules that I have is because I've been here long enough and I've been at other high schools as well is to assure the board and assure the community that um, the purpose of project graduation is not to provide a luxurious fan uh, over the top sort of experience. The experiences that our kids are very much in line with the experiences that other high schools, other high school parents provide their kids. Um, and it is a wonderful investment to accomplish Project Graduation's initial mission, which is to keep kids safe during graduation season. Um, project, for those of you who have been through it before, you know this, but I will just reiterate that Project Graduation is a nationwide movement that actually um, started in Maine, in Oxford County, um, a little over 20 years ago in response to a week or a couple of weeks surrounding graduation where there were several fatalities in Oxford, in an Oxford County school district. So Project Graduation was started as a gift from parents to kids to keep them safe on a, a night in particular that had historically been a pretty dangerous night. Um, but we are not an over the, we don't go over the top. Um, I've been at far more luxurious Project Graduations in other schools that I've been at than in here, and this is perfectly in line with, um, with what other schools do, and certainly doesn't exceed what other schools are doing typically. Thanks, Jeff, I appreciate that. I guess I just wanted to raise the point, if we can talk about policy, mm -hmm. because I don't want parents to ever think that we're, because they have to bring it to the board, that we think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. So just well, don't want to take away, take any barriers, put any barriers in front of the parents who are planning this, because they're just parents planning it, and they don't, sometimes policy scares people. And so I just want to make sure there isn't a, you know, we, we're not putting any steps in the, to get in the way of this great night and great event. But yes, to keep the, everybody knowing about the money. Right, and, and if I may, uh, it just so happens that it does come up at a big time that you raise that issue because we do have on deck, and at one point we will get to our on deck policies, the fundraising policy and you know, addressing whether the 20,000 limit is a high enough threshold or is it too low to bring Thank you. David. Um, again, for the public, the, <coughs> to expand on what Jeff said, this is basically takes a place, it's, it's a way for kids all to get together, they go to a certain location, there's all kinds of activities for them. It's basically to prevent, it's a safety thing in the sense of, in the past, kids may drink, they may do drugs, they may party. This is not only uh, an attempt to avoid that, but it's also a bonding experience. It's a closure experience. Social, there's all kinds of sociological aspects. It, it's going to cost around twenty-six thousand dollars, but the public should be aware that this is raised by the class and the parents. It's only going to cost the parents about forty bucks a parent. It's going to cost the taxpayers nothing. Yeah, but it, it is immensely valuable to our students and to um, completing an important experience of their life. So. I think it's important we've made aware of it. I think it's important that we show our support for it. Okay. All those in favor of item 6A? 6B, I have a motion. Um, I move that we approve the proposed class of 2014 project graduation trip on June 8th, 2014, according to board policy IHOA field trips. Is there a second, Elizabeth? Is there any further discussion on project graduation? All those in favor? All right, item 6C, may I have a motion? I move we approve Ted Jordan's AP government class trip to Washington, D.C., March 18th through 21st, 2014. Second. Second. 
Is there any discussion, David? Again, for the record, uh, we've been given a fairly detailed form. Uh, so when we approved the field trip, approved it according to the guidelines and general principles set forth in a two-page form, which covers all, in my opinion, integral aspects, where, when, how, who's chaperoning, what are the requirements, what's the purpose, what's the cost. It's a very detailed two-page document because it's, so when we make our decision, we're approving it according to the attachment to the, uh, to the agenda. Uh, so we're not just proving a field trip, we're proving a detailed, described field trip to us. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Joe, would you like to discuss 6D? Uh, certainly. Um, the policy committee is putting forth for a public first reading of the policies as outlined in item 60 in tonight's agenda. With the exception, um, after Monday's policy meeting, we realize we still have some more work to do <clears throat> on policy JIC, student code of conduct, policy JICA, student dress, and student Nope, sorry. JICH, substance abuse. It's like, why did we discuss that on Monday? And <laughs> um, say, what policy that? JJJ, co curricular athletic programs and high school eligibility requirements. Um, these policies are intricate, they are heavily watched, and um, they need a more thorough review before the policy committee feels comfortable moving those forward. Um, so we do put the rest of those policies out, which are just a handful of those, as well as those that we are recommending for either no change, um, because we just love them the way they are, or we're also recommending a series of policies for deletion removal from the policy manual. After the policy manual had been reviewed by our um, district's attorney, Drebin and Woodsum, they had recommended policies for removal either because of duplicity or because that they are not policy, they're more procedural, or even more importantly, because they are simply a state law and no knowledge policy need to be applied. So if you have, we are asking the public as we put these out for first read, as well as the Student Government Council, in case there are any questions and concerns that they have on those policies, to please um, address your concerns to either Meredith or I. Um, and uh, the deadline for those comments to come to us, I think, is April. I'm, our next meeting will be <laughs> right, this gets February 3rd, February 3rd, but 3rd? the 4th. Third. Third. Yep. But the focus of that meeting will be these three policies that you've identified that weren't included in the agenda for this evening. So I think it would still be helpful to have comments then. Absolutely. But would, they may not come back for the February meeting, February board, board meeting. Right. However, those policies that we did mention, even if we do discuss them in the February 3rd Correct. meeting, they will be coming back out for a first read of the date. And I'm sorry, just to clarify, when um, are comments from the public acceptable until what date? Is it February 3rd? 3rd. So not beyond that for, for the ones that you're putting forward. Um, it's our intention to collect comments from the public by a certain deadline, and we're, we're putting that deadline as February 3rd. Okay. Right. Um, certainly if there's major concerns from the public on any of those policies, we'd okay. be happy to take the, the, sure point of the, the, the point of the deadline is just that that's when the policy committee meets and so that, yeah. but if it gets comments by then, it can incorporate those comments into its work. If it gets comments afterward, um, you know, th those comments would be incorporated like any comments to the board from the members of the public, but wouldn't necessarily be incorporated into specific work being done on a specific policy in a timely way. Um, so there's no um, there's no vote necessary on 6D, so we'll just move on to 6E, and I'll turn it over to you for that. Thank you. Um, I move that we approve the policies listed in our um, this evening's agenda under, under item 6E. Um, these policies have been put out for first read into the community. Any comments that we have received on those or any further work that we as a committee have done have been incorporated into those and these are our final list of policies 
and their changes that we have recommended, or um, no changes recommended because, again, we love them, and also um, a final recommendation for removal from the policy as well for the reasons that I stated earlier. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is there any discussion? David. Um, I had two questions on two different policies. Student assessment uh, policy, ILA, uh, is there, I read it quickly, um, it, is there any part of the common core that relates to student assessment or is that really teacher assessment? The common core is about student assessment, um, but the, while Maine has adopted the common core for reading and mathematics, it hasn't yet updated the statutes. So this policy is still compliant with statutes. So the answer would be that we may have to change it when, when the state, state law gets updated. Correct. Okay. The next one is IJJ, I'm sorry. Um, I marked on the wrong one. Uh, There's one that, that used the word learning, um, maybe you can tell me as I try to find, oh, here it is. Uh, selection of educational materials. It, it refers to learning results, content standards. Is that still a term of art? So the main learning results again, let, Same so have been replaced by the Common Core in mathematics and reading, but as yet the state has not revised the statutes that so, pertain to them. So again, IJJ is correct if we approve it, but it's going to have to be. Correct. Okay. Well, at least I'm not a complete idiot by no, no, wondering you're, what No, no, you're that quite was. right. And it's, um, but yes, we've gone back and forth on those a couple of times, but those statutes have not yet been updated. Thank you. Are there any other thoughts? I actually forgot to mention something about the previous agenda. Is now a good time? Let's circle. Let's vote and then circle back to that. Okay. Is there any further discussion on the motion in front of us? All those in favor? Okay. So I wanted to circle back to the policies that we're putting forward to this evening for the first read. Um, for the first time, we actually have a whole new policy, um, the ADR, Change Model Policy. And I just wanted to um, bring that to everyone's attention for a specific review. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Okay, item 6F, may I have a motion? I move we approve the following extracurricular staff nomination, and specifically that would be Woodland Tabry for girls, seventh grade basketball. That's a second, okay. Uh, is there any discussion? David. Um, I think it's all right to say this, but I, uh, I requested that the form that we use to get information uh, be improved, and I think the superintendent indicated that she would take a look at that. Uh, in order, I, I will vote to approve this, but it was because it was supplemented by personal knowledge of several members of the board, as well as the superintendent, about the extensive amount of work that went into picking this person, which isn't necessarily reflected in our board, it is in fact not reflected in our board packet. But I wanted the public to understand that there was a fairly substantial review of this person, uh, supplemented by people's personal knowledge and the superintendent's personal knowledge, and a lot of work went into it. And um, hopefully in the future that will be reflected in the materials we submit as part of the public record. Uh, but I'm comfortable that this has been thoroughly vetted. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Um, item seven, committee reports. Are there any committee chair people who would like to? Sure, to further report? on along with the policy committee theory. Um, so our next scheduled um, policy committee meeting is Monday, February 3rd. At that meeting, we will be 
restricting our review or agenda to reviewing any of the comments that we receive on the policies that are put out for first read this evening. And we will also be continuing our discussion around those policies, JIC, JICH, and JJJ. And then did you want to also comment on um, maybe postponing marches? Yeah, I'm happy to. Um, I have asked the board to indulge me in potentially postponing the March um, policy committee meeting because in the absence of a business administrator in the midst of budget season, it may not be um, in our best interest to be focused on policy. I know that I won't be able to devote my full attention to it. Happy to hit pause. Okay. Uh, any other committee reports? I can say that Buildings and Grounds will be meeting on the 22nd, and negotiations is scheduled for the 29th. Evaluations on the 23rd. The Evaluation Committee is meeting on the 23rd. I can also add that Community Services Advisory Committee meeting is tomorrow night at 6.30 in the Community Services Conference Room. On the agenda will be the big picture around the pool as well as um, a discussion of what items to bring to the board's um, uh, school board workshop on the 22nd of this month. And that's tomorrow night? That is tomorrow night, 6.30. And where Be do they meet? The square. Where do they meet? At the community services in the conference room. Mm -hmm. um, can you speak to the membership, the current membership needs for the community services advisory committee, or should I turn to, to Meredith for that? Uh, we do have two openings. Two openings. Um, we currently have um, corralled the former chair to continue his chairmanship, but I believe that we are looking for two community members to join the Community Services Advisory Committee. Okay, we, we, we got a lot of public interest in community service issues over the last year. Absolutely. There's a really interesting work to be done at community service or at community services around um, sort of big picture mission and vision and work being done at community services around. It is really amazing the amount of overlap between the mission of the school and what happens with the students in our district as well as the adults and this and the programming that happens as well as the enormous amount of responsibility that community service has over some of our largest assets in the community including the fitness center and the pool. So I think that there's a room for a lot of input from um, a concerned member of the community on how to shape some of our most valuable assets in the community. So there's a great opportunity for somebody looking for some, to do some community service of their own. Absolutely. To work with the community Anyone interested advisory can contact the superintendent's <laughs> office to apply. Can we flash a phone number Did you have a question or did you want to volunteer? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Um, but I'm just curious how, you, how they're going about um, campaigning for these positions. Right, it's not campaigned, it's an appointment. So we posted back in November. Yeah, we it's advertised in the BCPA in the newsletter. It's in the Public <laughs> Affairs Association newsletter. It's been on the school district website and announced at these meetings. And I know that advisory commission members were also doing outreach as well as staff of community services attempting to find. Um, but it's something that individual school board members can do if, they, if you think you, you know, might know someone who, not, not, <laughs> I'm not asking people to sign up for that, for that work. There's plenty of work to do on this board. Um, but if you might, if you know people who might have an interest in the work that community services is, uh, is doing, um, you know, there's, there's, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing for us to be recruiting for um, those positions. And that phone number is 799-2217. <laughs> Could I make one small suggestion? I guess I did turn up my mic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not going really that deep. Um, I would suggest maybe the, uh, put up a notice at the fitness center at the pool. <clears throat> Those are the people who are most vitally interested, the two biggest assets. It would be nice to have somebody who u utilize those beyond the board to provide a particular perspective. So if you put that up, you, you, um, and maybe tell the people who work there to talk to the people that come in. You might be able to get one or two people. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The library um, building committee has begun its work. Uh, last night was the first meeting. It's a town council committee that uh, school board members Jeff Shedd sits on. Kel Jeff and Sh uh, Kelly and I sit on that. Um, Greg Marles as well from the school. 
Um, it looks like Monday nights at 5.30. Every other Monday night at 5.30 is our, uh, we're hitting the ground running. Wow. Yep. Looks like Yeah. Thanks for doing it. Thank you, Kate. Okay, on to item eight. Are there any agenda requests for business meeting? <coughs> okay, seeing none, item nine, announcements of upcoming meetings. I think we've worked our way mostly through this. Um, the only thing I would add is that we, the school board has on our calendar a retreat on both the 24th and the 31st of this month. Um, we are going to postpone that until after the next school board business meeting because we will have more information from our building administrators on the strategic plan goals at that point and that's information that we'd like to um, have in advance of our workshop or retreat so that we can incorporate it into the work that we do in terms of developing school board goals for 2014. So, that, that meeting um, we talked about before this meeting, um, post, postponing until into February. I might have misheard you, John. I thought you said 21st and 24th. You mean just the 24th? 31st. Oh, 31st. We had the 31st as a snow date. We had a snow date. Oh, we had a, a, a date on the 24th and a, date, a okay. snow date on the 31st. And I thought we were having to retreat twice and I'm going, oh, no. <laughs> no, we're going to try to have it just once. Okay, thank you. Um, and that brings me, I think, to item 10. Susanna, may I have a motion? I make a motion that we adjourn uh, school board meeting. A second. All those in favor. Thank you, Susanna.